Hi everybody. Okay, you're not going to know this, but this is actually my second video on this topic today. My first one, the sound was uh, not the best. I know how you guys hate that. You guys don't like turning your speakers up or this or that. So I'm going to do my best to try to cut down on the sound and try to bring my point across. Okay, so Cruz was in Nevada, and he was talking about how if and when he becomes president, how he's going to return the Nevada's land back to the people who actually own the land and basically fevered some anti-government rhetoric and activism thereof. And basically, off record, he was supporting the Bundy standoff in uh, Oregon, and he made a couple of choice comments to basically support them in the 2014 Nevada standoff with the federal government. So, I don't know exactly who I'm going to vote for. I don't even know if this guy's in the top three yet. Um, but there's definitely some situations going on involving this. Uh, Ted Cruz's campaign backers are aligning Repu the Republican presidential candidate with politically with political cause of Nevada's infamous and recently jailed ranchers Cliven Bundy, Amon, and Ryan, uh, harnessing the same anti-government fever that fueled the armed standoff with neighboring Oregon. Head of Tuesday's Republican caucus in Nevada, Cruz has recently released a news ad promising to fight back against federal control of public lands, a move addressing the central grievance of Cliven and his sons, Amon and Ryan, who led the armed takeover to the National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon last month. Cliven was not there. They should not put that. And basically supporting both standoffs as they exist. But more or less off record. Uh, although the Texas senator has publicly has have not publicly supported the Bundy militia Cruz has emerged as the candidate most closely tied to the ultra conservative quote unquote protests against federal land use restrictions and some of Cruz's campaigns Nevada representatives are painting the candidate as a champion of any government activism in the west even as a Bundy brothers leading movement face accusations in court of violently conspiring against federal officials and threatening assaulting law enforcement agents. The most direct link between Cruz and the Bundys is Nevada Assemblywoman uh, Michelle Fiore, which we know her from probably the last uh, film or the last upload of the, uh, what was it? off my base or defend my base or whatever it was on YouTube. I apologize, folks. But she was basically talking the last couple of guys out and last one said he was going to come out shooting and he was going to kill himself and all that other stuff. And Fiore kind of was there to champion him on and say, no, 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 you can't do that. If you do that, your cause is lost. How is that going to look for the rest of these guys that already turned themselves in? So anyways, She's working with Cruz and its leadership uh, team in key swing states and the most outspoken elected official defending the armed militia in Oregon. Quote unquote, supposedly. So, uh, according to Fiore, uh, this is a very, very important issue to him. Quote unquote, that being Ted Cruz. So, and it even lists the situation with their father, Cliven, as a Nevada rancher whose 2014 standoff with the government over his refusal to pay grazing fees energized right-wing land use protesters across the region. His ranch is in a town called Bunkerville, Nevada, and one of the big and Fiore is one of the biggest defenders of that. So it goes on and on and on about Ted Cruz, Michelle. Uh, one thing versus another, and the Bundys. So, I mean, this is this is probably very close to, I would say, better part of four or five good pages of information. But basically, Ted Cruz spoke 
being a campaign rally in Las Vegas. Cruz is being painted as a champion of anti-government activism in the West. Um, this is coming from The Guardian. You can kind of take this one way or another. You know, when you are in those areas where that stuff is necessarily fresh, you do kind of want to swing toward the voters who would stand up for that, who would champion for that. So I don't know whether or not this guy is going to talk talk or walk the walk when he after he gets in the White House, if he ever does. Um, however, it does seem very official that he is in the background discussing the details with Michel Fiore. So if he actually makes it in the White House, we might very well see uh, pardons for Cliven, Amon, and Ryan among Pete Santilli and the rest of those guys. So. This is actually very, very, very interesting, folks, to know that there's a candidate that close to the situation who might just be able to do something about it. Thanks.